Thank you, Kevin McDonald. Appreciate that. Hey, guys, it's Wednesday's time for a Facebook Live, just a couple of clicks after noon. Um, I'm really excited to have this conversation today. I've been talking with so many people across the city in so many different capacities about the theft of catalytic converters going on in our town. Um, a lot of us have been, not me included, but a lot of us have been victimized. It's a sort of a shocking thing to turn the key in your vehicle and hear this horrid sound coming out of it and realizing you may have been a victim of something that's gonna cost you a little bit of money out of pocket as well. We're gonna talk about that. Um, so we're gonna talk about prevention as well. And I do wanna get into a little bit later the uh, bigger aspect of automobile theft here in Albuquerque and statewide here in New Mexico as well with some of our guests. So let me make some introductions. We've got Fred Lohman. He is the regional director of the National Insurance Crime Bureau or the NICB as I'll be referring to it as we go along, the Southwest region specifically. Uh, Chris Ware is with us. He's a special agent with the National Insurance, National Insurance Crime Bureau as well, Southwest region, but he is our state of New Mexico operations area guy. So we really wanna get some words from him about this. Uh, in the box with the three folks, I'm very thankful to have from the Office of the Superintendent of Insurance in Santa Fe, part of our state government, in case you don't know, uh, Senior Agent Joseph Chavez from the Criminal Division of OSI, and that also includes Statewide Auto Theft Authority. Uh, Roberta Baca is with us. She's also with the Criminal Division. She's the Criminal Division Director of o OSI, and that also includes the Auto Theft Authority. And they've been kind enough to bring along as a special guest for us, I can't thank them enough, Deputy Commander Mark Torres from the Albuquerque Police Department. Uh, Deputy Commander, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I want to get some stuff on the ground uh, from you as well. And last but certainly not least, Representative Antonio Mo Maestas. He, along with uh, Meredith Dixon, uh, Bill Ream, Natalie Figueroa, and Joshua Hernandez were the sponsors of HB 144 the last time around. The damage to property by theft an interesting piece of legislation that is being, I, I see it replicated across the country in many different ways. So we'll talk about that as well on the prevention side. So big long introduction, but we got some great folks here with us and we really wanna get after this catalytic converter thing. I think it's a lot bitter, bigger than you might realize. And this is one to pay attention to. So Fred Lohman up in there in Texas, I really appreciate you being with us. Regional Director, National Insurance Crime Bureau, Southwest Region. What the heck is a catalytic converter? What does it do? And why are people stealing, stealing these things left and right? Well, first of all, thank you for, uh, for having me today. And uh, a catalytic converter uh, is part of the vehicle emission uh, system of an automobile. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, uh, automobiles today are highly complicated machines, uh, computer controlled, and the emission system and the converter itself are instrumental in, in many aspects of making sure that we have clean air to breathe. It is part of the, probably the most critical component of the automobile that converts really poisonous and in many respects, deadly types of emissions. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, if it works correctly, like they're supposed to do, it, uh, it emits just vapor, ga uh, just air and water. So it's a critical component to an automobile and uh, it's a very expensive part of an automobile as well. And uh, you know, you, you really can't drive your autom modern day automobile without this converter because it can cause a lot of damage to the, uh, to the automobile if it is not in place. So it's a critical component. Why? Why are we seeing this across the country? NICB noticed uh, from reports from our law enforcement and our member companies that were handling the claims, an uptick in the number of converter thefts that began during the pandemic, the lockdown. Uh, and part of the, what was driving that was the cost of the precious metals, okay? lockdown mining operations and so forth that produce the ingredients to make these uh, these converters uh, there was diminished numbers of them and of course uh, that drove the the criminal enterprise to steal these things mm -hmm. At the beginning of 2020 I'll just give you an example palladium which is excuse me rhodium which is one of the uh, men converter was about $7,100 an ounce. Palladium, about $1,967 an ounce. And platinum, what often have on their ring fingers, about $1,022 an ounce. 
today, as of July 14th, uh, those numbers are 19,450 for rhodium, 2835 for palladium, and 1108 for platinum. So the, the cost of the precious metals has skyrocketed for a number of reasons. And uh, the thieves recognize make a fast buck. We recently completed a case in the Dallas-Fort Worth area where we uh, were involved in the arrest of um, uh, some individuals from another state that were buying these converters uh, through uh, social media sites. Mm. And they had in their possession receipts showing that they had disposed of $70,000 worth of converters in just a few short weeks. So. It's, it's easy access, it's quick money, uh, it doesn't take a, a lot of time. If you've got a Sawzall, you can basically remove that uh, converter in, in real quick fashion, and then you're gone. And they're not identifiable. There's no secondary VIN number placed on them. So we can't go back to our manufacturing, shipping, and assembly records, which the NICB maintains, and tie that converter to a particular automobile. Like we and with other major component parts, which are mandated by federal law to be specifically marked that way. So that creates real challenges for us and for our law enforcement partners, because just the mere possession of these, uh, how do you prove that they were stolen? How do you prove that that individual was the thief that removed them from the cars? Right. So there, there's a lot of challenges for law enforcement to try and, um, you know, you know, uh, combat this this type of problem, these types of thefts. Mm -hmm. That's brilliantly set up. I appreciate that. It, it you know, you go through Reddit. Uh, here's a tip for folks watching. You want a, a sense of how big this is. Go to Reddit and just punch in catalytic converter theft, and just watch what comes up across the country. It's um, it's 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 phenomenal. Uh, Chris Ware, for also from NICB. Let's home it in on New Mexico now. Uh, Fred just touched on how easy it is to steal one of these things. Let folks know exactly where they're located and why it is just so easy that these can, can be stolen right in your driveway as you're sitting at home or in a busy parking lot while you're in your office doing your work. What, what's the deal there? I'm sorry. I'm having uh, I'm ha having internet connection issues. Um, I got you. I got you. Can I, I'm going to kick this over to our Lieutenant Commander and, let you, and, and we'll just kind of figure that out. And you're, you're not going anywhere, Chris. We got you covered. But let me go to um, uh, where to go here. Okay. There he is, uh, Mark Torres from the APD. Uh, Mark, what, same question. What is it about these things that make it so easy to steal and people should be wary that it's so easy to steal right out from under their nose? Oh, you guys are on mute. OSI, you're on mute. No sweat. <laughs> Gotcha. So one of the, e the easiest answers, because they're accessible, they're simply up underneath the car. So you, usually most cars now have enough crawl space and with an electric uh, Zossaw, you can get under there, reach, and li literally in, in under a minute, you can cut each side, it just drops down, you pull it out, you d cut the cables with some wire cutters and you're on your way. Wow. Um, Albuquerque, uh, do you have a sense of w what's happening in Albuquerque specifically when it comes to catalytic converters? It's tough to judge anecdotally, but I'm seeing a whole lot of activity out there where I can, social media and other places. What's your sense of it at the department, how bad the problem is here? So, so catalytic converter problem came to Albuquerque Police's attention first through Al Albuquerque Public Schools, Rio Rancho Schools, and the University of New Mexico. Those buses during the pandemic, when they were parked, seemed to be easily tar easily targeted, and they were easily victimized. So, so since then, we've done a study at the Albuquerque Police Department. I, I'm with the Real Time Crime Center, and we have analysts that are trying to keep track of this, so that we can get real time information out to our area command, so that we can have some real time results. Mm -hmm. So, when 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 we started looking at just the UNM area, the University of New Mexico area. In 2020, they, they only had uh, nine, nine catalytic converters reported on all the university. In 2021, they, they had 31. So we figured we, we, we were starting to see uh, an issue. 
When we reached out to Albuquerque Public Schools, we had found out that 18 of their buses had been hit in one night. So as we started studying it and started looking at it, at catalytic converters in the city of Albuquerque, we, we had two in 2020, we had 338 stolen. Wow. And to date, well, this isn't even to date with, this is just a, a three month time period when I did this report back uh, on April 28th, the city already had 145. Holy smokes, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, staying in the OS, with the OSI guy, there's uh, folks there. Uh, Mr. Chavez, uh, Joseph Chavez from the criminal division. Obviously, you're working in, laws, in lockstep with our, your law enforcement partners. Where did OSI, the office, step in? At one point, did you say, okay, this is related to what the work we're doing with auto theft and other things. We need to get active with this. Well, thanks for the question, Gene. And we fit in, we collaborate with a number of different partners and we've seen this problem, again, for a number of different reasons. Uh, huge parking lots with a lot of vehicles and, and people, these thieves can basically blend in. I mean, if you pull up to a Sam's Club parking lot and you see somebody fiddling around underneath the vehicle, you don't really think that they're stealing anything. Right. So they're, they're kind of hiding in plain sight. Uh, but we, we're all taking a collaborative approach to, to combat this, and we're going to continue to try to be as proactive as possible working with other partners. And uh, again, it's, a, it's very lucrative for thieves to get out there and get these, but in order to do that, they have to steal a, a lot of them um, and then right. compile the different precious metals contained within. So Interesting points there. Chris Ware, can you hear me okay now? You, what's, what's, your, what's your connection? Yes, sir. Ah, good deal. You sound good. You sound good. Uh, now pick up on pick up on where we just were with those folks about what you're seeing as you look across New Mexico, even outside of Albuquerque, because there was a lot of reporting that Santa Fe was having their share of problems with this issue as well, uh, given the kind of vehicles that you might find in any given driveway up there. Uh, give us your sense of New Mexico as a whole as you look at it with through your eyes. So like everyone else said, oh, thanks for having me on. So like everyone else, it, it's a, there's an increase uh, statewide. The bigger cities, uh, they're gonna have those bigger parking lots where it's easier to, to maneuver inside and under those vehicles and kind of just not be seen. Mm -hmm. um, Santa Fe, Las Cruces, um, not so much in the Southeast, but there's still some going on down there. Okay. Uh, but, the, the trucks are the easiest ones. That's that's what we're finding. And that's what I'm seeing is mostly trucks because they're easier to slide under. Mm -hmm. Although there are vehicles, passenger vehicles that are getting hit as well. You know, um, I've, got a, I've got a list here. You mentioned trucks. Uh, I've got a list here. of. of I'm assuming this might have came from you guys about the most active uh, thefts by brand of Toyota Tundra, Toyota Prius, Toyota Tacoma. Ford F-250 and the Honda Element in the Honda CRV. Is that is that track pretty closely what you're seeing out there? Uh, yes. Chris Ware, sorry about that, my fault. Mm -hmm. Yes, that that that's about right. Yes. Yeah. Um, any truck that's that's off the ground more than eight ten inches for these guys to slide under there and and cut it off at, at 10, 15 seconds. They don't take them very long. Gotcha. Um, Harder to slide under some of these these SUVs nowadays. They're they're only eight ten inches off the ground or six to eight inches off the ground. It's really hard to slide under there. It, it's all about convenience for them, right? So, you know, we're, uh, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to prevention here. I really want to talk about that. Go ahead, sir. Sorry. Okay. Not a problem. Let me get our representative. Um, so in. Uh, let me let me interrupt here a quick sec. Sorry about that, Chris. My fault there. Uh, a representative Mo Maestas in and uh, talk about HB 144, the damage to property by theft. Now, again, uh, Mo, thank you for being with us. It, it, that bill is not necessarily directly applicable or was designed to talk, to talk about catalytic converters, but they are listed in here uh, amongst other materials that uh, would qualify. Um, in, the gen in your general sense, uh, when you listen to this conversation and all the stuff you're hearing, you're based here in Albuquerque as well in the area, where does legislation come in? Where do, where do penalties come in? Where do, what's the proper balance of, of deterrent versus you know, anything else when it comes to you know, criminalizing these kind of things? No, thank you, Gene. Thanks for having me. And you're, and you're right. The penalty 
should fit the crime, you know? And so we've been working hard in Santa Fe to make sure that the criminal code is consistent with each other and that, and that we, you know, we're, uh, that the penalty com uh, meets the, uh, the crime meets the penalty. Well, this bill has been running for about two, three years. You're correct. We're ahead of the game. We didn't anticipate this phenomena of the rise in metals as it relates to catalytic converters. It was mostly for copper theft that takes out electrical uh, grids and things of this nature. But mm -hmm. the magic words catalytic converter is in statute or in, is in the bill rather, forgive me, yeah. is in the bill as it relates to the definition of precious metals. So once we get this uh, bill passed into law that it will fit perfectly with with the problems that the that the law, and off, law enforcement officers are articulating. But essentially, here's the, the crux, stealing or, or in state law, larceny. Larceny is based on the on the market value of the of the thing that you stole. Okay. And so if you steal, uh, you know, a piece of copper wiring that maybe is two hundred dollars at the local at the local uh, uh, recycling center, then you get charged with a crime of stealing two hundred dollars worth of stuff. Well, that metal that you take out of a house or take out of a, a electrical box causes tremendous damage in terms of criminal damage. The, the intent to damage the property is to steal it. And so when you steal these catalytic converters, you're essentially demobilizing the entire vehicle. You're, you're ruining that person's, you're, it's, it's equivalent to a car theft in a way. Right. So we wanna take it out of larceny. We wanna create this special crime of, of larceny causing criminal damage, which was a uh, house bill 154. It'll have a different house bill number next year. Right. But even if we don't get it passed next year, we'll get it passed here pretty soon. And we'll educate prosecutors, judges, officers as to the importance of this particular crime. Because, you know, we have a tendency of just looking at the crime charged and not really delving into the facts. And the facts of these larcenies is tremendous damage. And we need the tools uh, to fight this crime and, and make sure that it happens less as opposed to more. Mm -hmm. Um, one more question for you, Mo, and I, I've, I've left someone off at OSI. Don't worry. We're coming back to you guys in a quick sec. Interesting. I, I see a lot of states getting after this, of course, and one of them, particularly in Missouri, I thought this was interesting. The first offense would be a class A misdemeanor, and then the second, any subsequent theft within a decade would be a class E felony. I, I'd love to get your opinion on that. Is, is the misdemeanor charge, uh, you know, anything in your view? It could be, yes. As you okay. know, a is a year or less felony is a you know a, a year or more but there's different procedural rules and different aspects as to how prosecutors and judges treat misdemeanors as opposed to felonies our proposal in new mexico is to bump it from what would be essentially a petty misdemeanor to to a fourth degree felony so it's not to throw the book at them necessarily but to heighten the importance of the crime and ensure that 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 those cases don't fall through the cracks that 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 stack of uh you know, cases on the prosecutor's desk that these cases rise to the top and that we, have, we ensure swift and certain justice to these folks that are stealing these catalytic converter, converters. I really appreciate that. That interesting point that you're leading me to. Uh, Roberta Baca, thank you very much from the criminal division at OSI. It just seems like, as the more I listen to this, it, it's very complicated, it seems to me, much more than it might seem on the outside because it seems to me, you know, you folks are working with your law enforcement partners it is the prevention side, certainly, but where do these things go? There's got to be a trail to where they lead to, to, to where they're just being sold. Are you involved in that process all the way down the line? Where do you leave off with law enforcement? I guess all that kind of thing. I'm curious how the process works with you folks. So um, actually, I'm uh, an attorney and a head prosecutor, so I'm going to let one of the agents tell you. I, I do know that they do go to scrap metal yards and, and everything else. So I'll let the senior agent talk to Perfect. about that. So. Perfect. Yeah, so they can go to a number of different places, a number of different recyclers. And, and right now, even if you go to turn one of those catalytic converters into to sell, there's really no way of identifying if they're stolen or not. So, there's no real way of, of even following up with that as a crime. And right. without, without, with the lack of that possible crime, it, it wouldn't make any kind of sense right now to dedicate resources towards that investigation. Right. I pick up what Fred Lohman mentioned. I'll come back to Fred here just a little bit as well with the VIN numbers. And, and, and how, do, how do, you know, the, uh, the addition of a, another numeral and all that, it sounds, you know, fairly innocuous, fairly easy to do. But it seems like, uh, Agent, things are complicated that way. I, I'm curious where the OSI is coming from on the, on the bin angle. Okay, and uh, so as we 
we talked about yesterday, the VIN etching equipment we currently have will etch a VIN number into glass on the vehicle. Uh, there are there is different equipment which we are prospectively looking at that that could etch a number into metal. Um, they sell different ones for fiberglass, etc. So again, that's one of the proactive approaches we will be taking to assist other partners. And you know, this is not a a victimless crime. There, there's a number of different issues that can that follow one of these thefts. Um, there's insurance claims, and if somebody goes to take in a catalytic converter and possibly get you know two hundred dollars or even less, you know you have a per, a victim out there that's that if this could cost them five thousand dollars to replace. Therefore, they're making uh, insurance claims and so on and so forth. So. It, it's really we 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 fully support the um, the enhancement in the in the degree of crime that this is. I appreciate that for sure. If, if someone's got a little audio thing in the background, can I ask them just to turn that down a little bit? I hear sometimes these things are hard to control. I appreciate that. Uh, Fred Lehman from uh, NICB, can I uh, get back to you for a quick sec? One of the things you mentioned to me in our pre-interview yesterday that really kind of blew me away. I thought about it all night. I did not realize, I guess I didn't think about it, that bigger vehicles are, are just as vulnerable as passenger cars. I mean, big trucks, things like that. I've not heard many people talk about that. Could you kind of dive into that a little bit? Yeah, that, uh, that too is a national problem. Mm -hmm. And Mark uh, referenced that in his initial comments with the school district and the buses at the uh, university. And we're seeing the very same thing um, Dallas Fort Worth area is one of the largest, uh, you know, trucking uh, ports in the United States. And uh, those trucks, if they're sitting there, they're at risk. Right. Same thing with the school districts. We've had a number of school districts that have been victimized. And, you know, these are large class six, seven, eight trucks. And so they've got large engines. They have large requirements uh, to deal with the, uh, the emissions that they produce. Uh, while running. And so these converters are significantly larger than the converters that you would find on a passenger vehicle or a light duty truck. Um, and so they contain more of those precious metals, palladium uh, and so forth. And obviously they're going to bring more when they're uh, sold at the scrap metal yards. Um, and so, yes, it is a problem. Uh, we had a meeting <clears throat> about two weeks ago with the district attorney in Fort Worth. And, uh, you know, that this was brought up. She was actually received uh, a call, a very uh, concerning call from a school district superintendent that had, you know, about 40 or 50 uh, of their school buses that uh, had the converters taken off. Well, now you've got the, the public's paying for that, right? Those are tax dollars that are gonna have to fix and repair those vehicles. If it's a large truck corporation that's victimized, transportation costs for the things that you and I, that we all consume, clothing, it all goes up. That, that money doesn't go anywhere. You know, they just don't write it off. And then the insurance industry is really uh, having to step up the vast majority of these losses uh, through insurance claims. And... Uh, they are expensive. These things can be extremely expensive. And if they're driven and they damage other parts of the engine, you know, it could also be a lot more than uh, what would have been the cost if it had been appropriately and quickly dealt mm -hmm. with. So, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of things with our partners on the prevention side. Um, we're, we're trying to do a lot of what we're doing today uh, to, elite, to uh, make sure that the public knows you know, there's things out there they can do to protect their vehicles, their fleets, their buses. Um, and it, it, it's going to require a collaborative issue or a collaborative uh, effort in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Chris, can I ask you to pick up on that? And now that we're in prevention, I appreciate uh, Fred taking us there to exactly where I wanted to go. How, how can folks protect their, their property, their vehicles? Because we're talking also as well, these thefts happening in the middle of the day out in parking lots. What, what can people do? So one of the things that I'm, I'm looking into is, uh, like I was mentioned before, hopefully getting uh, etching on uh, catalytic converters. 
or possibly painting a, a converter. Um, park in a well-lit area um, where you can see or maybe where there's cameras. Um, other than that, I mean, just be be mindful of where you're at and, and what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. um, if you say something, say something. Um, it, it's I, I, I'm hard in, the, in, in Chris, heavily Chris, populated I'm, areas. I'm, Chris Ware, I'm seeing things online uh, in classic American opportunistic fashion. <laughs> Uh, prevention, prevention, things for sale we on Amazon. Facebook. <laughs> Do any of those things work? I mean, it doesn't really hurt. Um, I mean, getting your name etched, I've seen that, uh, getting your name etched on the catalytic converter. Um, where these things come into play, where they would work is if the metal recyclers would turn those away instead of purchasing them. If they see that they've been painted or or altered in some way uh, that would be the only way that it would legitimately work um, you see Facebook you see people on Facebook buying converters um, we've already got intelligence that people from Texas are coming into Mexico so the converters here ain't staying here they're going other it. other places seriously so, touch on the, that is that some kind of organized effort coming to New Mexico what, what is that um, I would say yes. It's an organized effort to to buy the converters and yeah. get them sent wherever they're going to get melted and and turn into the metal that they can go sell on the market. Gotcha, Fred Lehman. Back I market. saw your. Oops, sorry, Chris. My fault there. I saw your Fred. Uh, Fred, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just wanted to, to offer two other things that uh, we're considering, um, not just nationally, but we're also considering this uh, in Texas. There's some nanotechnology out there and it's gotten very, very good. And in a, a company called Protect DNA developed nanotechnology to create what they like data dots, which are microscopic. And these were initially, we used these when we had a, an epidemic of tailgate thefts uh, in, in Texas, okay? So these would be sprayed on uh, to the tailgate the crooks wouldn't know it because they couldn't see it. And law enforcement would have a viewfinder that they could actually look in the location where we were marking the gates. And to, lo and behold, we could tie that unique number back to the owner and the VIN of the vehicle that it was stolen from. And obviously we made cases. Well, ProTech recognizing again, the entre entrepreneurial ship of uh, good old America figured out how to make these uh, micro dots, data dots, so that they could withstand the tremendous heat that's generated by the converters, right? You just spray these things on, uh, the crooks can't tell that they're marked, but law enforcement can. Hmm. And so, you know, like Mark and, and Roberta and company, if they're out doing inspections, it could very easily, uh, if they come into contact with some suspects with a large number of converters, they could look at those, and lo and behold, all you need to find one that's stolen, and, and now you've got something to work with. So right. there is technology out there that, that law enforcement can uh, avail themselves. And with Protect, the great thing about, they've been a great partner for NICB, our law enforcement agencies here, uh, but also for the insurance industry, because they do this free of charge for the insurance industry, huh. for their I should say. The insurers then reimburse them. So there's no cost to law enforcement. Roberta's not having to, uh, you know, to uh, put aside money to do this. The money's there through the in industry to protect their customers. So that's just another option. I'm that's so glad there. you threw that in. Absolutely. Oh. Roberta, I got to get you in on this one before we uh, let you guys go. Roberta Chavez from uh, uh, OSI. Now, talk about that, that, that nexus of technology and other tools at your disposal. Yes. So, right now, I can just tell you that um, there's so many new things coming out that we also belong and partner with the International Association of Auto Theft Investigators. Um, and we're getting ready to have a national conference in August, the second week in August. And we're going to talk about 
a lot of the technologies that have already been presented and some of the newer technologies that aren't quite ready to roll off the, the production yet. So we, we look at everything we possibly can, including you know, partnering with the Albuquerque Police Department, all of our really the statewide auto theft authority partners with every law enforcement agency um, in the state to do whatever we can and to pass intelligence around right. so that we all are kind of on the same page with what's happening. It, it sounds like it's a fairly coherent effort, meaning you guys are all stitched together and NICB of course is working with you and others and you know, it, it just seems, am I right on that? It seems like we've got a good all hands on deck front going. No, absolutely. We, we partnered with NICB um, since the inception of the insurance fraud, you know, division, and they're a great partner. And of course, we also partnered with the legislators. Uh, I do have to say Mo and I started way back when together at the DA's office. <laughs> <laughs> And so um, we partner with our legislators um, in our local city and uh, county officials. And so it really is an all hands on deck kind of uh, deal for us. Ms. Baca, is there any legislation you would let person like to see or the office would like to see or perhaps you're advocating for? Is there something about this issue that your office feels could use a little bit more um, when it comes to legislation? So not specifically to catalytic converters, but we, we do have some proposals. One would be a, a, a funding fee. Right now, the statewide auto theft prevention authority is, is an unfunded mandate, essentially. We, we try to do the best we can with what we have. And, and so we would like to, to um, have that funded by the legislature. And uh, there's also some concerns. There's been some um, Supreme Court decisions with auto burglary tools, people that are breaking into your cars and what kind of constitutes an auto burglary tool and things of that nature. We think that need fixing uh, statutorily. And we'll be visiting uh, with Mo and our other legislators. And, and of course, this next session is a, is a uh, money session, but after that, in the next 60 day session, we'll be gearing back up to work with everybody to produce some hopefully good legislation that everyone can live with. Appreciate that for sure. Uh, let's finish with um, Deputy Commander Mark Torres. I do have a couple of questions. Uh, very specifically, are there any hot spots in Albuquerque that are showing themselves at this point that folks should be aware of? No, so technically, this is a crime of convenience. So, so it's not like it, there's any hot spots. Okay. Because technically, you know, we're, we're seeing the crimes between, you know, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So it can almost be where these individuals are at the time they find a vehicle that's abandoned or alone. So they just, it's an opportunity crime. So, so I mean, I, I'd say that, you know, we've educated our, our, school partners, our universities on, on having their buses well lit and under surveillance so that they're no longer victims. So now they've moved on to the individual. Uh, but and unfortunately, Albuquerque being the most populated area and then we have the surrounding areas, it, it's, it's virtually impossible to, to, to publicly support every individual. That's why prevention has to take place before prosecution. Right. Because we, we if we can prevent it, then, then we don't continue this cycle. As you know, we're coming out of COVID. Our judicial systems are bogged down because there's been months of cases that have just been piling up. So so I think what we have to do as a law enforcement agency with all our partners is, is focus on prevention first and then collaborate together on building good cases to prosecute for successful outcomes. Mm -hmm. Sounds perfect. And my last question, uh, Mr. Torres, is, is again, you touched on how folks can, can protect themselves. Is, is there anything anyone can buy off the shelf to help against these things? And, and, and have you seen anything? So, so I, I wouldn't know if the technology, maybe Agent Chavez could, could explain that a little bit more than I could. Sure. Yeah, Gene, so there is, there is devices out there that I've noticed that some auto park stores are selling. Um, it's essentially um, a, a cage type or, or some cables, little thick cables that'll kind of box in or attach your catalytic converter. Now that won't always cause, or that won't always prevent the uh, attempt. 
So they may cut it. They just they may not be able to, to get the actual converter. So, so that's something that people can look into if they're interested as an anti eject device. Um, but as Chris said earlier, if you see something, say something. If, if something looks at a place in a, in a parking lot, even at a Costco, and there's been a number of people just running through underneath the cars and cutting, cutting those out with minimal effort. Um, if something looks out of place, please feel free to reach out to your local law enforcement and, and say something. It really is an awareness campaign at this point, isn't it? it, it you know, yes. I, I, that's my sense of it from our end at New Mexico and Focus. It, it, it's like it's an awareness thing that has to happen for a lot of folks now. It, it catches everyone by surprise. Whenever someone gets hit, it, it, when I see it on Facebook, they're always like, I've never heard of this. I didn't realize these things were being stolen. So there's work to do out there and we wanna do our part as well. And that's the reason we wanted to gather you guys today to talk about this. And I can't thank you enough. It's been a wonderful conversation. I've learned a lot. It, it's, a, it's a huge problem. Let me thank from NICB, Fred Lohman. He's the regional director, of course, of the National Insurance Crime Bureau out there in, in, in Texas. Thank you so much, Fred. Your help is invaluable here. Chris Ware, I know, you know connection issues are, are part of the game. We'll have you on again with this, I have no doubt. We're a special agent. We're here in New Mexico for NICB. We appreciate your work. And of course, the folks Thanks for having me. in our Office of Superintendent of Insurance we just heard from Joseph Chavez and a little bit earlier, Roberta Baca. And just now, you just heard from Deputy Commander Mark Torres from the Albuquerque Police Department. We very much thank uh, uh, Officer Torres and Representative Antonio Maestas. Thank you for your insights on this as well. It's important, uh, these things about how we, you know, criminalize or not, these things are important in how we solve this problem. So thank you again, folks. Really appreciate your help. Don't be surprised if you get a call from me again here soon <laughs> or at some point and see how we're doing on this. Oh, and before I forget, OSI folks, do we not have numbers coming out at the end of this week on uh, uh, auto theft statewide? Do I have that correct? Is, is that what's coming, uh, Mr. Chavez? So, so we're hoping, well, I'm sorry, I'll actually answer. Fred is laughing because we're hoping that, um, that our NICB counterparts will have something to us by Friday. And uh, like we spoke about yesterday, we're keeping our fingers crossed. You know, for the first time in three years, we dropped to number two. Uh, and we're hoping that we'll actually be um, not even in the top five or at least not number one or two anymore. So the um, auto theft efforts from local law enforcement agencies have really stepped up this last year and we've really tried to do the best we can. Um, and as Everybody knows auto theft rates are actually up nationwide. So right. that's right. That's right. Boy, I'll tell you what, if we drop out of the top five emotionally, that'll be a big deal around here. I mean, we've been in that top three for so long. I mean, even falling a second means something at this point. Thank you for getting that in, Ms. Bach. I appreciate that. All right, folks, we will see you Friday night at seven. Uh, we've got a great show coming up. We this subject won't be part of them, but we've got other things coming up. I want you to tune in for. We'll see you there, channel 5.1, of course. Until then. Uh, stay safe. We'll see you next Wednesday for another Facebook Live. Thanks, Gene. Thank you. Thanks, Gene.